So I'm joined with the faces behind the microphones, the NBC IndyCar coverage. We've got the 2023 season coming up this weekend, live for you on Sky Sports. And joining me is Lee Diffie and James Hinchcliffe. Lots of new things to look forward to this year. Just talk us through what it's like to be back for another season of IndyCar racing and what can we expect from this weekend. Well, Tom, first of all, thanks for having us. Uh, James and I are very excited, and also our, our booth colleague, Townsend Bell, who couldn't be here right now. He's flying in from California, but we're all super excited. You've got to remember what a special place it is for this guy <laughs> because he won his very first IndyCar race here some 10 years ago. So um, the season opener, wherever it might be, um, creates a lot of hype and a lot of excitement because we're kind of a, it, it signals the end of that winter break, and you know it seems too long in IndyCar. So we're all very eager to get going. But St. Peter is such just a beautiful place. We're by the water, the sun's out, uh, warm weather, everybody's feeling good and, and just say overly ready to go. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, this, this place really gets behind this event. The city of St. Petersburg just has supported it since it first started in the mid-2000s. And it really is one of the best places you could dream of to start the season off. As you said, the atmosphere here is great. You're on the water. Uh, it looks awesome. The track itself is a lot of fun as well. An airport circuit very challenging for the drivers. It's always hot. It's always humid here in St. Pete. And it's usually a pretty long race, 100 laps, first race of the season. You're still kind of getting driver fit. So every time we come here, I'm looking for drivers falling out of the seat late in the race. You know, you're blowing that dust off straight into a street circuit, no room for air or walls everywhere to bite you, whether it's in practice, qualifying or the race. So there's, there's a lot of action I think we're going to see this weekend. And Tom, add to that the biggest field we've ever seen at St. Pete with 27 cars. So can't ask for much more. That's going to be fun heading down to turn one and through that sort of turn two, three sequence. IndyCar's historically very unpredictable. That's what we love about it. It's very difficult to predict who's going to win and, and, and where the form guide's going to lie. And we've got a couple of big changes for this week, or weekend, I should say, that the Wyoli tire. Have I pronounced that right? <laughs> who's going, who's yeah. going to correct me on that? Yeah. <laughs> So that's the green sidewall tyre, right? And that is going to be the alternate tyre for this weekend. And for the street courses, how much of an unknown is that tyre for the teams, the drivers, for you? And, and what can we expect? Because last year we saw the alternates providing a bit of a, a spectacle. Some were on the three stoppers because it wasn't going long enough. McLaughlin with that magical first stint, he got it to go so long. But we're... We're not going to be treated to that this weekend. We've got a whole new tire that they're going to be running on. Well, luckily, they have some experience with this tire. We think back to the Nashville Grand Prix last year. It was the debut of the Waiuli tire. So it's that same compound, that same construction that they've now adopted for the alternate tire on all street courses. So the teams do have a little bit of experience with the tire itself, but different racetrack. And as we know, these tires can, can behave very differently from one circuit to the next. You can take it 30 laps here in the past and go to Detroit, and you'll be lucky if you hang on for 10. So we're still not sure what this tire is going to do here specifically, but at least the teams do have a little bit of experience with it. We know Firestone always come with great products, so uh, it's, it's, it's cool to have something like that and that kind of new green initiative. And it's a great look, story. It's a great story, and we like when there's unknowns. There's things that the, the yeah. teams don't know and the engineers don't know. And it's good. It's 100% grown here in the United States as well. Totally organic product. Um, it's also the debut of a new 100% um, uh, recyclable uh, fuel source uh, developed by Shell. So uh, IndyCar is certainly doing its bit about as sustainability, Tom. So there's, there's a feel good factor there as well. And that was going to be my next question because I talk to the drivers sometimes on the Saturday night and I'm like, what's the mileage like? You know, what, what it's look, what's it looking like for you? With this fuel, Shell say that there's, there's no impact on performance, but is there any impact on the mileage? And, and what are we going to see this weekend? I think that's going to be a secret the teams keep until uh, until race time. I don't think they're going to want you to know that. Yeah. So anything they tell you, I'm not sure I would believe it at face value. Well, yeah. you, you brought it up. You brought it up yourself, Tom, about you know McLaughlin's terrific run before. We know that there's nobody better in this sport at at, at making a fuel cell that 18 and a half gallons last longer than anybody than Scott Dixon, who, by the way, has never won here before. Kind of difficult to believe that. Um, so. We'll get a, a bit of a gauge on that. I think the teams will definitely get a gauge on that throughout the practice sessions and qualifying. But more to the point, we'll kind of, it'll be 
see as we go throughout the race and, and we'll be able to have a lot more to say uh, at the conclusion of this 100 lap season opener. But it's interesting, there's a lot of changes both technically and from the from the driver standpoint, the human resource side with the teams, there's been there's been some movement within strategists and engineers, uh, drivers changing teams. His best mate, Alexander Rossi, switching to Arrow McLaren FP is one of the big talking points for this season opener as well. I think touching on that, you'll know Alexander. He, you know, he's a confident guy. He's got a few friendly faces around him, Brian Barnhart and his engineer he's worked with as well. I mean, this is a big opportunity for him. How, you know, what are his thoughts heading into this weekend? How confident is he? Honestly, I think he's just excited. I think he's kind of excited to start this second chapter of his IndyCar career. You know, he came into the series back in 2016. He's done his entire stint essentially with the Andretti Autosport organization. And now he is making a big move to a team that's been running up front, been winning races, competing for the win in the Indy 500. All these things that he's sort of been missing a little bit the last few seasons. He had a really strong start to his stint at Andretti Autosport. The last few years have been a bit barren. And so I think he's very excited. He knows that the expertise of Craig Hampson, his race engineer, is probably the most most coveted you know, uh, setup book of any engineer in the paddock. So he's very excited about that. As you said, the familiar face of uh, Brian Barnhart calling strategy for him. Um, he's got some very experienced mechanics uh, on his on his car. One that's had a, a long relationship with Craig Hampson going back to Newman Haas. He's been at Coin recently, but Todd Phillips now going to be on the uh, on the seven car. So they've really created this sort of this perfect little bubble of personnel around Alex, and so I think he's just excited to uh, to get racing. Testing maybe hasn't gone as smoothly as as he would have liked up to this point, but. None of that matters. This is when it starts to get. I think the big thing uh, too, and Hinch can speak from the other side uh, of the coin. In in the modern era of IndyCar racing, Tom, you think about two people in particular: Elio Castro Neves with the 20 years that he had at Team Penske, and Scott Dixon had like a, a fleeting moment back in the kart days with Pac West before he joined Chip Ganassi Racing. Now he's been at Chip Ganassi Racing for 21 plus years. So other than those two guys. Most people are used to changing teams, and Alexander has not. You know, his home, as Hinch said, his home has been at Andretti Autosport from leaving Formula One, coming back home here to the US, and winning that 100th running of the Indianapolis 500. He, know, he knows nothing else. Yes, he's done sports car racing and went to Australia with this guy to do the Bathurst 1000, but he's only known the bounds of Andretti Autosport. So it's a big step, not necessarily into the unknown, but I think. Um, it doesn't matter what sport. It could, it could be Premier League football. It could be NFL. It could be anything. When, a, when an athlete changes an organization, it, it, it can either go one of two ways. It's really going to it's really going to go downhill, or it's going to reinvent them and reinvigorate them almost. And I think it's going to be the latter for Alexander. It's a pressure cooker. Look at Jack Harvey. That's a prime example of somebody who was on the crest of a wave, made the change, and, and it, it, it's gone. Uh, one way he's going to be looking to change that this year he's under a bit of pressure but RLL and uh, you've got Chip Ganassi with Taylor Carl as well there's a few HR changes can those two teams Arrow and RLL McLaren that is Arrow McLaren push into that stronghold that Team Penske and Chip Ganassi have got on that championship I mean I think if you look at just kind of historically and statistically, you're, you're going to put McLaren first to be knocking on that door. You know, RLL had a really rough year. They expanded to, to three cars in 2022. As you say, they took on Jack Harvey. They added a car for Christian Lingard, who was phenomenal in his rookie season in a pretty yeah. difficult situation because the team really wasn't on full song. But they've got a new facility now in Indianapolis. As you said, some really key hires and some technical positions, juggling around some engineering staff. There's a lot of potential, but they're just starting from much further back than McLaren. McLaren, same thing. They have hired a tremendous amount of people. They've expanded to a third car. Is it going to affect them the same way it did RLL? We just don't know yet. Um, they're certainly, they certainly have the resources, both financially and human, to, uh, to hit the ground running and be in a good spot. But adding that many people to a team, there's going to be some gel period. There's going to be some get to know you time. And I don't know if that's going to affect their on track performance yet. So it's, it's going to be interesting to see how both those teams perform against the big two. Yeah. You've got to love the unknowns and that's what makes IndyCar so special. And it's every weekend as well. It's not like you get the, the form guide after two or three rounds and, and that's it. 
So just before you go, because I know you've got a really busy weekend, if, if you had to put your name, uh, your, your a name in the hat for a driver that has a real chance this weekend, because Joseph Newgarden, right, there's been a lot of talk this week about him being runner up and, and, and that coveted record that he doesn't want again this year. But he's somebody that comes into the championship with, with a lot of momentum and confidence, as he always does. But he's got a new engineer again. Now, we've talked about changes, but that is strange from my perspective. Team Penske at Powerhouse, Joseph Newgard and their shining lights. And, and he's got a new relationship that he's got to really quickly make work with limited winter testing. I, I think he's shown in the past, Tom, that, that he's a very good uh, adapter. You know, so I, I don't think he's had time uh, with his new engineer, Luke, to, to try and bond and form that relationship. And um, I, I don't see that as being a, a big stumbling block for him. Um, what I see, aside from the championship for Joseph Newgarden this year, the big hurdle for him is he. this is the year he must win the Indianapolis 500 because his patience has long run out. You know, he, he, he feels that that, I mean, no driver feels they're owed it you know, because it's the, the biggest race on the planet. But, you know, he, he all of the pieces of the puzzle are there for Joseph Newgarden at the, at the Brickyard. Um, and I, I, I hope for his sake that this year is the year that, that he does win that because he's already got a couple of championships. Um, he's long from retiring, far from that. Uh, but I, I think he's one of those guys who certainly deserves to, uh, to have his face on the Borg Warner Trophy. Yeah, I think yeah. you're right. This weekend, I've got my eyes on Colton Herta, to be honest. He's got a nice new contract with Andretti Autosport. I know there's been a lot of, you know, internal shuffles at that team, really trying to focus on weaknesses from last year. But one of their strengths was street circuits. You know, he's won here before. He's got a, a new teammate in uh, Kyle Kirkwood. They've been both very quick in testing. So this is this has always kind of been, you know, over the last year or two, the the strength circuits for uh, for that team. I think Colin's in a good spot, so I think he's got as good a shot as any. But he could also be sixth because you've got Joseph Newgard and Scott McLaughlin and Scott Dixon and Will Power. I, I don't know how you pick anymore. Yeah, it's it's really hard. And, it, you know, from my perspective, being over here in the UK for the UK audience, just getting that message across that every weekend's different and the form guide just gets ripped up. And you think you know it, and, and then it goes away. And, and also speaking to the drivers, it, you know, that's not something that's manufactured. That literally, when you speak to them on the Saturday evenings, it, it, there's so much that look at Polo last year or, you know, how New Garden just disappeared off the face of a cliff in, in, in the race. That There's so many unknowns and that's what we love. Well, uh, Lee, James, you've been amazing. You are the uh, voices of NBC IndyCar. You do a wonderful job together with Townsend Bell. And we're very much looking forward to your coverage this weekend. You can watch all the sessions and the race live on Sky Sports.